All right. That's a lot. Uh, let's get into it. It's been a rough season for Derek Carr and the Raiders so far. He's had several of them here. This one really stings. Lots of offseason hype. They're two and seven. We're talking about them on the show right now for a reason. Heading into week 11, two and seven. There's been a lot of blame that goes towards Josh McDaniels. This team was in the playoffs last year. Raiders owner Mark Davis, though, does not share many of those opinions. On Monday, the owner told the Las Vegas Review Journal, I like Josh. I think he's doing a fantastic job. That's why I hired him. We did an exhaustive search and found the person we believe is going to bring the Raiders to greatness. Uh, so here we are, 10 weeks in. I think they're unequivocally the most disappointing team in the entire league out of 32. So we ask, what's going on with the Raiders and what are our thoughts about what Mr. Davis had to say? Mike Garofolo. We talked on the show yesterday where I said I would be surprised if Josh McDaniels got bounced after one season. Uh, so that's one end of it. And then the other end of it is what you're just reading right there. I don't, I don't think we're there. I don't think we're here. I don't think we're there. We're somewhere in between. And you got to kind of grade uh, a little bit on a curve here because this is a team that just has not drafted well mm. in recent years. And you got a previous regime and they let themselves go of Jonathan Abram, who was one of those key picks. I mean, I can mention Alex Leatherwood, Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett, uh, Cleveland Farrell, who was an active the other day uh, for a disciplinary reason, I believe. Um, it's kind of hard to win when these are your top draft picks. And I could go on and on. There are more of them that haven't contributed. Uh, so that's a problem. So you're just going to have to sit here and give this regime some time, uh, some time to, to reset, get their own guys in there, and show that they can win games. I would say this. It's not like it was the first time Josh McDaniels was a head coach with the Denver Broncos where it was an unmitigated disaster and guys couldn't stand him and he just had no ability to communicate with guys. Maybe he was trying to be Belichick, whatever it was. At least it's not that vibe this time around, so you're just going to have to suck it up in the meantime, Raiders fans, and maybe we got a little bit too far out over our skis thinking that this team was ready to compete in a tough division. Yeah, I think that last part you made, tampering expectations, I think sometimes – Josh McDaniel takes over a good football team who made the playoffs last year, and he's a, an offensive guru, as they say, and I, I'm a big believer in Josh. I got a chance to be in the same locker room with him for a few seasons in New England. But when you take over a team and you insert a new general manager, a new head coach, a brand-new coaching staff with their own system, you don't just roll the ball out there, go play football, and the team just takes off. You see that happen sometimes. Kevin O'Connell's doing a great job in Minnesota. Dable's doing a really good job with the New York Giants. But that's not taking place right now for the Las Vegas Raiders. But it's not like, all right, Josh McDaniels is a terrible coach. He's here. They're not winning. Get rid of him. No, sometimes it takes time. You install your system. Guys need to buy in. Everybody needs to learn that system, learn how to execute the system under pressure as well. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm right with you, Mike G., Give them time to get everything rolling. And it's not a rebuild. You're just continuing to build on a team that you Jason, have. Jason, they're the worst team in the NFL. Okay. They have Devontae Adams on the roster. Yeah. Okay. And they Devontae have Max Crosby. Crosby. Yes. They have Derek Carr. You're talking about Matt LaFleur rolls out of bed, wins 13 games with the Packers. You're talking about Sean McVay rolls out of bed. What do you mean give it some time? They, you don't hire a guy and, all right, we, we learned two out of our first nine games, so it was just like, all right, it didn't work. The Rams suck right now. Mm -hmm. They're not playing well. Mm -hmm. They still have a really good football coach, and I know he's had the past success, so I'm not comparing McDaniels to McVay. Yeah. But I'm just saying, just because the team is struggling doesn't mean, all right, throw it all out, mm -hmm. start all over, because you fire Josh McDaniels, you start over, you bring a new coach. I was a part of this for many years. I played eight years in Tennessee four different head coaches, three different general managers. We never went to the playoffs, not one time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until after that, Malarkey went to next year, and then obviously Vrabel with the success they've had. But every year, if you just keep hitting the reset button, keep hitting the reset button, it doesn't guarantee success. Uh, I, I was just asking you, because I look at that roster, and Mike, as much as they've hit, they've missed on draft picks, they do have talent all yeah. over it. And, you know, Devontae Adams, you think about Devontae, what he's got going on there, and then you think of what Tyreek Hill got when he went to Miami. Yeah. It's like the, the complete different end of the spectrum of when you leave these teams for, for new ventures. One and done, though, is rare air. I mean, that's that's Jim Tomsula, that's Steve Wilkes in Arizona, that's Freddie Kitchens, that's Cam Cameron that one year in uh -huh. Miami. And I don't think Mark Davis is going to go one and done. Mark Davis still has a settlement with John Gruden. Mark Davis is a, a different financial situation than some of these other owners. Like, mm -hmm. I don't see Mark, Mark Davis paying John Gruden and paying Josh McDaniels out another four years of his contract. So, brass tacks on this thing, he's not going anywhere. They're not firing him and just eating the cost. I don't think Mark Davis has the liquid to just fire him and eat all these costs and say, let's keep on rolling. Um, sometimes it just comes to the finances of it. And, 
Chase, I think you're being very kind to Josh McDaniels. I think this has been an unmitigated disaster on the field. They lose every one score game, and yet I'm with you in a way that, like, there's too much talent in the roster, and he's seen too much football for this to be just, just a complete failure in the end. Yeah, I'm not interested in McDaniels being like, oh, I'm just interested in why the hell are they so bad? <laughs> what, what is this? Because, you know, you, you, it's a blessing and a curse. You inherit a playoff team, and they won double digits, and they were one throw from beating the Bengals. That's great. The curse of it is you better be great the next year. You're not getting a two-win team. Like, we expect to. This was the team that was going to take out the Chiefs. We spent the money. We brought in the players. So I think the statement from Mark Davis is frustrating, and I, I, I think it's nonsense in a lot of ways, too. He literally says, I think he's doing a fantastic job. No, he's not. They lose every single one-score game they play in, and a lot of one-score games, the coaching is the difference. Mark Davis also said, everyone wants instant gratification. That's not true, and that is a cop-out. That's not what this is. We want you to be able to score one point against the Saints. I, I don't need a Super Bowl Losing this year. Losing to Jeff Saturday is a bad look. It's a terrible look. Who's he going to lose to next week? Kornheiser? I mean, come on. What are we doing here? You lost to a guy in his first game ever. Um, so, listen, I don't need an undefeated season and a parade through Las Vegas, but I, I would like some gratification. I, I would like to not get shut out by the Saints. So, I, I'll say it again. It's so negative. It's it, the, the most disappointing team in the NFL by far. They've beaten the Broncos, who are in contention, and they've beaten the Texans, who are kind of a real team. Guys,